After two weeks of action-packed madness consisting of many happy and sad moments, the Wimbledon Championship has come to a close, with the men's singles final at the All England Club on Sunday the 10th of July. As you probably already know, Novak Djokovic won his seventh Wimbledon title after defeating opponent Nick Kyrgios. And since then, the runner-up has had a lot of shocking things to say about his defeat. Let's get into it. First up, how did Kyrgios take the loss. After beating Christian Guerin in the quarters, Kurios skipped straight through to the decider as Rafael Nadal pulled out of their scheduled semis matchup with injury. While most players would be over the moon to land straight in the final, the 27-year-old explained that not getting a chance to play in the semifinals was a bit of a disservice to him, and the day off messed with his head, making him even more anxious than before. Fast forward, Nick competed in his first Grand Slam final at Wimbledon. Despite playing exceptionally well and having his best ever run, the 27-year-old came up short and was unable to defeat Djokovic. After three hours, the Serb secured a four-set thrilling victory on the center courts and claimed his 21st Grand Slam title, overtaking Roger Federer to tail Rafael Nadal for the all-time men's record. As Linkin Park would say, the Aussie star tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it didn't even matter. So, of course, it was quite natural to feel despondent after the loss. In a post-match press conference, the runner-up of the championships was frequently seen trying to hide under his red cap, but the pain in his eyes was as clear as day. While one would think Kurios was trying to stay guarded, he did quite the opposite. When the Aussie's girlfriend, Costine Hatsi, posted on Instagram she was super proud of him, Nick replied with a heartfelt, I love you, but not without also admitting that he's sad. Don't we love a man who's not afraid to show some emotion? So what was discussed in the press conference? While answering questions from reporters, Kurios wasn't shy to show off his vulnerable side and made some statements that left us feeling very sympathetic toward the young star. During the raw press conference, the low-spirited Canberran said that he did everything in his power to make sure he was ready for the games and doesn't understand what more he could do to prove his commitment to the sport. Nick said that he believed his time to make a Grand Slam final had passed him by years ago and and he thought it was ridiculous that he's even a Wimbledon finalist. Although he felt appreciative of the privileged position, it wasn't until he went up against Noel that he finally felt like he belonged. Talk about some serious imposter syndrome. Fans have often wondered what the Aussie star could achieve if his attitude matched his talent. It was only after he went head-to-head -head with the Serbian legend that he realized how the trophy was very much attainable, especially since he played quite a hell of a first set, putting himself in a position to win but ultimately it was Djokovic's composure that led to his victory, which is something the world number 47 clearly lacked, as he constantly lashed out at his player box for their apparent lack of energy as the match continued to turn more and more in Djokovic's favor. This was not a comfortable sight for the crowd and viewers to watch, and many, including the tennis great Renee Stubbs, took to social media to call him out for his abusive behavior. But what was the most startling confession made? When discussing ahead of the week's Atlanta Open, how his drive and belief in himself were impacted by the results and what they may mean for his future, Kurios suggested that the loss may have been a blessing in disguise in extending the man's tennis career. He admitted that had he beaten Djokovic and won a maiden Grand Slam title at Wimbledon, the motivation to keep competing may not have been there anymore. He added that every player who picks up a tennis racket has the same dream, to win Wimbledon, the biggest and most prestigious tennis title ever. He explained that he had a conversation with his team, whom he told that had he won the finals, he would have reached the pinnacle of his career and would have no idea what to do next, since what else is there really left to prove? Pointing out his age, he said, I'm no longer a young gun, like Sinner or Alcaraz, who have come on tour recently and gone deep at slams. Rather, for him, getting to the point of playing for a Grand Slam has been a journey that's taken him 10 long years, so it makes sense for him to say that his motivation levels for other tournaments would have definitely plummeted since his entire career was spent in preparation for this very moment. And had he accomplished it, he might have taken a break from tennis. After all, tennis players like himself grew up listening to how winning Wimbledon is the ultimate achievement, so we really can't blame him. Next, what did he share about his mental struggles? Well, Nick explained that he's truly happy to have gotten the opportunity to battle with the best, and it's really proven to him how 
how sheer will and hard work can make anything possible. He also described how the entire process leading up to the game took a serious toll on him, and we got a glimpse of how his mental health has been doing throughout the tournament, shedding light on the immense weight he's been carrying on his shoulders given his reputation in the sport. A brave Nick honestly admitted that while he was honored to be here, he never felt good. Knowing that so many people were counting on him really put him under a lot of mental pressure every time he was out on the tennis court. It even left him having constant doubts about whether or not he was even worthy of being here. He then added that social media just makes it all worse, and he's really had to struggle to block out all the negativity and opinions constantly being hurled at him. He further explained that senior players will never understand what it's like to go through this, but he commended Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal champions for being able to deal with such immense public scrutiny. But we're happy to hear that he's been in a much better headspace since playing the biggest match of his life. In fact, now that he's officially lost the match, he actually feels liberated. He went as far as to say, this is the best I've felt in two weeks. Moving on, what lessons did Nick learn from this experience? All ups and downs in life come with some form of enlightenment, so let's see what Kurios has taken away from his run at the Wimbledon final. As he looks back on his Wimbledon run, the Australian tennis star says his loss has taught him a valuable lesson about the extraordinary mental strength required to win a Grand Slam title. He explained, you can lose a Grand Slam in a day, but you can't win one. Expanding on that, he described the championships as an uphill battle, requiring you to repeat the same cycle of things for two weeks at your maximum potential. And although sometimes you might not be feeling the best physically or mentally, even if you're sick or sleep deprived, you just have to overcome these obstacles and keep moving on to the next match. The Aussie says the experience has made him appreciate just how much mental fortitude his greatest rivals on the ATP Tour really possess. You just have to be a mental animal to win a Grand Slam, he said, adding that Djokovic, Federer, and Nadal have definitely gained his respect. Lastly, is Kurios ready to move on from the Wimbledon heartbreak? As they say, not every loss means a defeat, right? Well, it seems that Kurios is ready to put his Wimbledon nightmare behind him. Nick Kurios announced his return at the Atlanta Opens alongside his fellow Aussie boy, Tanasi Kakanakis. The duo even went on to earn their first round win in the men's doubles against Nicolas Mahout and Edward Roger Vaselin. Oddly enough, should the pair both win their first round singles matches, they will also face each other in round two, which would be a first of its kind matchup for the Australian boys. As for the chances of this very match, Kurios is expected to win his qualifier, while Kakanakis is also being hailed as the favorite in his qualifier against the American competitor, Andres Martin. If both Aussies win their above-mentioned matches, they will go up against each other in the round of 16. Isn't that exciting? What's more is that Kurios will also feature in the Washington Open later this year, ahead of the Grand Slam, where he will partner with the American Jack Sock. So as things sit right now, it seems the star Aussie boy is ready to get up from his Wimbledon defeat and make his racket do the talking in the upcoming matches. Just like everyone else, we would also love to see an exciting comeback by the Big K. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about his confession? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.